Ross Atkins had a press conference today, and he revealed what we can expect of the Blue Jays' offseason plan moving forward. They made a couple of moves. They haven't been the flashiest, but look away, Jays fans, because you may not see some information that you're going to be happy about. So we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, before we get into this video, I want to let you know that it is sponsored by Rentals.ca. And if you didn't know, Rentals.ca is Canada's largest apartment hunting network. And we've been waiting for moves all off-season long. We got a couple. They haven't been the flashiest of moves. But if it's time for a big, flashy move in your life, look no further than Rentals.ca. Nick and I have both used it. The website is super clean, super easy to use. They're available coast-to-coast, -coast, whether you're in vancouver calgary ottawa montreal they got you covered so if it's time for a big move in your life and you're planning that next big move for yourself look no further than rentals.ca because they'll make that transition a lot more seamless for you yeah my brother used it you've personally used it so we have lots of experience with it it's great make sure to check out the pinned comment uh, and the description as well where there's a link so click that if you're interested and thank you to rentals.ca for sponsoring this one now peter ross atkins had a lot to say today some interesting stuff some non-exciting stuff and uh He's made a couple moves. You mentioned it in the intro. Nothing too flashy so far since we struck out on Shohei Otani. A lot of Jays fans wanted a big move, whether it was Cody Bellinger, whether it was someone else like that. And he basically had a lot to say. And let's just get right into what exactly he had to say. And he started with, on a call with Toronto Media, Blue Jays GM Ross Atkins says, quote, We feel really good about the team we have while adding that the Jays are continuing to explore lineup upgrades that will most likely be in the DH or outfield category, but we're not limited to that. Now, this isn't saying a whole lot. And he basically goes on to say that... Uh, he, he's betting on a bounce back internal improvements to do the work offensively. And this next move, how many moves are left, they ask? It won't be three, more so closer to one in that DH category. Now, if that one is Jorge Soler or if that one is J.D. Martinez, I can probably get behind it. But, Peter, this may not be the most encouraging thing if you're a Blue Jays fan. No, it's not. And uh, I've been on the same train, though, that you need some bounce backs out of your main guys if you want to accomplish anything this upcoming season. But sure, you could look in the DH or outfield spot all you want, but there's a hole at third base right now. And who's going to play there? Is it going to be a mix of Espinal, Biggio, and uh, IKF on a daily basis? I don't know if that's a successful combination for the Toronto Blue Jays. So look, at the end of the day, you need your guys to play better if you want to accomplish anything. But there's still some work to do with this roster. So I'm not saying to add three premier players. But one or two premier players is definitely a huge need for this Toronto Blue Jays team right now. And that DH spot needs to be filled with an everyday guy that's going to put up some big-time numbers for you. This lineup needs help. The rest of the team needs help. And you can't you can't go into next season with this same exact group that you have right now that, that's all i'm going to say you need one more big time piece and i think that'll be an okay off season for the blue jays but they struck out on otani they struck out on juan soto and i haven't really seen a backup plan that would equal to that now you're never going to get a player of that caliber if you don't get one of those two guys but there are ways around it where you can add and chip away you can add two or three players that might equal the value of those two guys right now the only ad that they've made is ikf a guy who didn't even break one wins above replacement last year so it's not enough it's not going to get it done you had to get significantly better you haven't gotten better at all as of now so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the Blue Jays to make something happen here because they desperately need it. Yeah, and it seems like the Matt Chapman stuff is uh, might be over. And again, how many moves are left? I don't think we'll add three players. One, most likely in the DH or outfield category. And again, if you look at what Keegan Matheson said, you can also look at the response. It basically sounds like from what they're hearing from Ross Atkins that, like you said, the Jays are bouncing or betting on internal bounce backs. And I think that's okay and that needs to happen. But I don't know if... Uh, if that's going to be enough to have IKF and Kevin Kiermeyer instead of Matt Chapman, and then also betting on some major bounce backs, and people are getting older. Springer's turning, or Springer's 34, Kiermeyer's 34. You can't really, obviously, he's not talking about bounce backs necessarily for Springer and Kiermeyer. They're mostly talking about Vladdy and all the other players of our show and people like that. But if you're expecting a lot of these bounce backs, you have to also expect some regressions from some of the core that is aging. The pitching isn't getting any younger, and it does not seem like from anything Ross Atkins has said, 
that they're going to make a huge splash. Again, the DH is needed. I would suspect, it. hopefully, a J.D. Martinez. That might be the only salvageable move at this point for me to be happy with the offseason. But, I mean, IKF is, is okay. He's not what we really need. But it seems like they're going to be starting him at probably third base along with Davis Schneider and Kevin Biggio. And I don't think that's a recipe for success. At that point, I probably would have rather bring back Matt Chapman. But, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're maximizing this two-year window to their full potential. No, it doesn't seem like that at all, Nick. You're bang on on that point. But another thing we got to remember is the trade market. Ross Atkins has been very active in the trade market over the past couple of seasons here. Now we're all focusing on the free agent market, J.D. Martinez, Jock Peterson, Reese Hoskins, whatever. Whoever it may be, we're focusing the DH position on a free agent. But I think it's a position that you can really attack in the trade market as well we, we've heard the talk about Yariel Rodriguez maybe coming along as a starting pitcher if you sign him then you got a surplus of, of starters so you can maybe look to trade Yusei Kikuchi a guy who's going to have a pretty decent amount of value with one year left on his deal he can go help a contender uh, and you can fill that void internally which is something that the blue jays uh, have as a position of strength which is starting pitching uh you can trade one of your relievers you had a very good bullpen last year you can look to do that uh, like uh, i don't know like a direct swap like how we saw from eric swanson and teoscar hernandez last year that's a way to attack it as well so the Blue Jays need to get better, whether it's in the free agent market or the trade market. They got to do something, Nick. They got to do something because we've been waiting now and IKF is not enough. I mean, as it stands right now, I would give this off season, uh, I would give the grade probably a D, maybe even a D minus. It's been that uneventful. It's been that lackluster. And we got to see some more because sure, you can bounce uh, you can have some bounce backs and you can bank on those guys really coming along and showing their true potential but what if it doesn't happen what if you don't get what you need out of Vladimir Guerrero Jr then you're in a then you're in a pickle you're in a pickle if you're the Toronto Blue Jays and I don't know where you go from there. Yeah, maybe they ended up putting all their eggs into the Otani basket with not much of a bounce-back plan. It doesn't seem like Cody Bellinger is going to be on the radar either, like we discussed in yesterday's video. And he had one other thing to say about uh, IKF. He basically said, or Ben Nicholas Smith said, the Jays are clearly interested in adding a bat. Whether they add one or two hitters depends on a few things. IKF's role will also depend on what else the Jays do. As of now, IKF would play lots of third base. Jays like his defensive ability and versatility, contact rates, and base running. IKF at third base does not excite me very much. That being said, Matt Chapman didn't excite me very much after April of last season, and they're actually pretty similar defenders last year. I think technically the advanced stats at IKF a bit better at third base. Obviously, I'd say Matt Chapman's still a better defender, but I mean, on the defensive side of things, IKF is fine at third base, but it seems like the third base position is locked up with, uh, with I guess, Schneider, a mix of Biggio, and mainly IKF, which doesn't excite me too much, but... I don't know, Peter. It's uh, it's not the most encouraging yeah. thing. I was hoping he was going to say they were going to make a couple of big moves. They were going to add some things. But it seems like they're going to add a DH. Uh, I guess a Brandon Belt replacement. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be anything too crazy. Although we will have yet to see until uh, until it ultimately happens, whether that's a trade or free agent. Yeah, I don't think you can compare the two players either, Nick, because IKF has nowhere near the amount of power that Matt yeah. Chapman supplies for you. So it just... You need, you need a power guy over there. You need a guy with a cannon of an arm, and you need a guy who's going to hit home runs. Now, Matt Chapman didn't do great in the power department last year, but you know that that potential is there. I still don't love bringing him back on a five-year deal, but the way that Ross Atkins and the rest of the front office are talking here, it might be your only option to salvage the offseason because you can't have Isaiah Isaiah Kiner for Leffo playing every day at third base. It just isn't going to work and whoever you trot out there is not going to have enough power to sustain a, a replacement level at, at that position you need a guy with power at third base playing for you every day and i know matt chapman wasn't great after april he he wasn't very exciting to watch at the plate but he played every day and he was in that lineup and that's one less thing to worry about if you're the blue jays uh front office so i uh, I don't know. I really don't know. As it stands right now, I could see this team winning 85 games right now if, if 
things don't line up correctly, and that's uh, that's a huge step back considering where we were at at the beginning of the off season. I mean, yeah, just a, a month ago or so, the Otani stuff was picking up, and we thought we'd have a chance to be World Series contenders, and we still have that chance. Ross Atkins obviously isn't done. Vladdy's hopefully going to have a bounce-back season, but it's looking a little bit scary, and when he said there's only going to be probably one move left, I wouldn't believe that Ross Atkins would say that if he thought that there was going to be a major move coming or a major trade coming. But that'll wrap up the video. Let us know in the comment section what your thoughts are on this. I know it doesn't make either of us excited. It probably doesn't make you excited. But if you are excited to make a move in your life, check out rentals.ca. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.